I'm always the other girl. So every relationship I've ever had, I've either been cheated on or I've been the other girl now four times. I'm a 25 year old female and I'm so disgusted with myself and heartbroken because this always seems to happen to me. I feel so low and I feel like I'm not worth anything because I can't seem to ever find a guy that isn't a cheater. There were red flags with this guy, the most recent one that I noticed pretty early on, but I made excuses after excuses for him. And looking back, I just feel so stupid. We've had our relationship since about October of 2023, and I found out yesterday that he's been in a relationship with someone else since August of 2023. A part of me wants to tell her, but I'm so exhausted and don't want to engage with her. I'm ashamed. Him and I did things together that I never would have done had I known he had a girlfriend. I feel so ugly and beyond low. I feel like I'm never going to be enough because this just keeps happening to me. Am I always going to be the second choice? You've been the other woman now four times. And while if you're going into it completely not knowing about their girlfriends or whatever, and you're being deceived, that is not your fault. However, there's definitely now a pattern in the people you're seeking out and dating. I had a pattern of finding these people that they were cheaters and just weren't, you know, the nicest guys. And so Justin is like the first person I've really dated outside of my usual comfort zone, my type, whatever I was usually go for. Not your type. You're my type, but like you were just different. You're the first like non hockey player I've ever dated. I was gonna, I was, I wasn't gonna say it, but I, yeah. every other guy before Justin, when you say, Oh, they're the best people hockey. on earth. I just think you really need to look within and figure out what attracts you to those type of people and why you're willing to overlook those red flags and stop overlooking them. Okay, so this is meeting my 16 year old son for the very first time tomorrow. Oh, wow. Good for you. Hey, all. To make a long story short, 17 years ago, my girlfriend at the time came to me and informed me that she was pregnant. We were in the process of splitting up when we found out. She already had one child from another gentleman and was undecided about her next moves, but it was likely that she was moving back with her parents to get some life things sorted. Her parents are approximately 14 hours away. We discuss options and what each of us would like with respects to the child. It was agreed upon that our number one intent was to provide the child with a safe and stable household in which to grow up. Adoption was the direction we were leaning in. Fast forward about six months into the pregnancy, she makes the decision to get back together with her first child's father and to attempt to repair that relationship. We discussed what would happen with the child's upbringing and that father one would be willing to accept full responsibility for the child and would accept him as if he were father one's own. Fast forward again to the child being about one year old. I received a phone call from the child's mother asking if I would like to meet. Just her and I discuss things and catch up. I agree. We meet and catch up. She gives me a couple of photos from the first year life. I'm also informed that the move back to be closer to the parents is happening at the end of the month. The only other contact that was made was approximately five years ago when I got an email with an updated email address for the mother. No other details were provided. One final fast forward to Sunday of last week, I receive a notification that the child's mother would like to connect with me via LinkedIn. It is of note that neither of us really keep any social media presence as neither of us really see any point to it. Accepting the invitation and I got a message via LinkedIn that said, Hi OP, I apologize for seeking you out through business, but this was the only way I could find you to contact. This must be a bit of a surprise to hear from me out of the blue. I hope you're well. Child's name here is 16 years old. He's been asking questions about his birth father and genetics. I think he would like to meet you. If perhaps you might be interested, please contact me at phone number or email address. I only join LinkedIn to be able to reach you. (laughs) If you have concerns or would not like to meet, I would still appreciate a short reply just so I know you received this message. Again, I hope this finds you well. Mother's name. I'm completely shaken at this point. I have ebbed and flowed on the desire to reach out for years and have not done so as I have not wanted to overstep and deeply value a two-parent household, not a two-parent household plus another parent, with or without the spouse on the side. I reach out to the mother via phone and we have a short but pleasant conversation. They're living about 45 minutes away and have been for the last 12 years. (laughs) We agree to meet for coffee and to catch up again the following day, Monday. 
We talked for about five hours. I saw many photos, heard about the child's upbringing, his successes, his failures, some funny stories, all of the things that a parent would like to hear about their child. At the end of the meeting, I'm asked if I would like to meet the child at a restaurant somewhere close to the middle of our places on Saturday, tomorrow. I agree to this and am now approximately 16 hours away from this meeting. I'm going to be completely honest. I'm freaking out over here. After feeling like I've failed my first and only child, I chose to get a vasectomy as I never wanted to feel that level of guilt and failure ever again. There were so many times that I felt like I was never ever going to have the opportunity to meet my child and I have done a lot of work to make peace with that thought. How do I even approach the situation at this point? I am over the moon, excited to meet my child for the first time. However, I still have such incredible feelings of guilt and failure. I have concerns for the unknown. Will the meeting be a positive one? Am I simply going there to get shredded by a teenager with an axe to grind or an otherwise negative disposition towards a father that was not there for him? As mentioned above, I have never had children. I don't know how to parent. I recognize that it's still very much not my role, but that doesn't change the fact that I have no idea what I'm doing, even in this meeting tomorrow. Any thoughts and opinions are very welcome. Update first off, I once again would like to express my sincere, heartfelt thank yous to every one of you that sent in such incredibly kind and thoughtful comments. I did not really know what I was expecting as a response when I made this post, but what I got was, for the most part, so incredibly kind and thoughtful. I'm truly humbled by the outpouring of support from all of you across the globe. For the first time in the better part of a week, I managed to sleep well and took advantage of that to catch up on some sleep. I apologize for the tardiness of this update. Regardless, here we go. We met at 3 p.m. Eastern yesterday at a sit-down chain restaurant. When I walked in at 2.45 p.m., I was standing at the front waiting to speak with the hostess. When I saw my ex walking up to me, we spoke briefly and I was informed that my son was sitting at a table close. I was beyond nervous. Mm -hmm. We walked over to the table together. It was oriented thus that his back was towards the door. I let his mother lead and she said in her typical calm and gentle voice, child's name, this is OP. We exchanged smiles and I sat down across from him. As expected, the tension and nerves were palpable. All parties involved were very much wired for sound. We exchanged pleasantries similar to what anyone would do when meeting someone for the first time. Pleasure to meet you. I've heard many good things about you. How have you been? The how have you been question sparked a response that I was not necessarily expecting, but probably should have given that this gentleman across from me shares my DNA, and therefore I should have known he would also carry my dry, sarcastic sense of humor. And he said, like recently or over the past 16 years. Nice. <laughs> All I could really do was smile broadly and answer with whatever you would like to share or both if that works for you. We share a meal, spoke for about two and a half hours at the restaurant, and took some first steps to catch up. I learned about his love of books, movies, and music, his deeply rooted love of video games, mythology, and folklore. He assuredly had questions about me and my life over the past 16 years, but he was exceptionally kind and gentle in his questioning. Mm. I never felt like his intent was to attack, only to probe or, and to quell his curiosity about where he came from. Near the end of the meal, there was a pause in conversation, and I felt it was appropriate to very simply and frankly say, thanks for reaching out, which was met with a very genuine smile and, of course, as a response. We collectively decided to leave the restaurant and walk around a shopping center that was close by, see also in the same parking lot. We walked and talked for another hour, very casual conversation, like that of a couple old friends catching up after an extended absence in each other's lives. The sense of calm and relief that progressively washed over me as we had this conversation was unbelievable. As the meeting came to a conclusion, both my ex and I reinforced that it is greatly the decision of my son if he would like to continue to foster a relationship and that both of us would support, respect, and honor whatever decision that was made. After a moment of reflection, I think that I would really like that was uttered. It is not lost on me that there is a lot of work to be done and that it's going to take a long time to do all of that work. I'm ready for it. I'm honestly willing to do what I need to do in order to make this right. I know that he has a lot to unpack. My ex has a lot to unpack and I have a lot to unpack from this past week. I'm simply happy and content with the thought that things are moving in a healthy direction. We took a picture together before we left. I have it on my phone right now. 
I'm not about to post it for anonymity purposes of my child, but one thing that really stands out to me is that in the picture, we have the same damn smile. Mm -hmm. The world works in such strange ways, but I am a firm believer that things will unfold as they are intended to, and this is another step in my walk of life. Come what may, I'm here to accept it and work my ass off to cross any hurdle that may show. Thanks again. Am I the asshole for calling out my dad's wife for feeding him seven-hour-old oatmeal instead of the fresh food I made? Okay. Yeah? <laughs> All right, yeah. I'm a 55 female. My dad, 83 male, had surgery last week to remove a cancerous tumor in his digestive tract. My mom passed away 17 years ago, and he married a younger woman who I've never been a fan of. Feeling is definitely mutual, but I tolerate her in order to have a relationship with my dad. Since his surgery a week ago, all he's asked for is rice and beans. He's 100% Irish, but has been, a, but having been married 38 years to my mom, who is 100% Puerto Rican, uh, he absolutely loves Puerto Rican food. Okay. He's basically been on a liquid diet until yesterday after a second procedure and was given the green light to eat solid food. Mm. He had a late lunch about two, around 2 p.m. I immediately went home and cooked for him and my daughters brought it up to the hospital. She had my dad call me at five to say he has eaten his hospital dinner and was full less than three hours after he had lunch. My daughters had the nurses put it in the fridge. I had already put his name and date on it. Visited this morning and he didn't have an appetite. His hospital breakfast tray was sitting there and I had brought him breakfast from the diner as well. All he had was coffee. I left him down in his room and even asked the nurse assistant when he came into his room if she could offer him the rice for lunch. I texted his wife the same. Got this text to me slash my siblings from the wife after she finally showed up to the hospital after 2 p.m. Okay. Your dad wasn't hungry today. Around 2 o'clock, he had oatmeal with chocolate chips and an ensure chocolate protein shake and a cup of tea. He is quite full now. He still has some pain slash soreness. He is managing his pain without pain meds. So I replied. What? Yeah. So I replied, I hope not. That oatmeal that was sitting out from uh, this morning? Her response, the oatmeal was covered and still good. It was superheated and melted his chocolate chips. I called the nurse's station to ask why my dad would be allowed to eat food from a tray at least six hours old. Turns out wife asked nurse to heat up the seven hour old oatmeal and he asked for his rice and beans and she, wife, just laughed. Nurse told me she's making sure Trey is gone and she, she seemed a bit annoyed at the situation. She says she's going to heat it up and bring it to him. I called and spoke to him. I asked if his appetite was back and he told me he ate the oatmeal. Asked him why he didn't eat the rice instead and he said he forgot, which is not true because the nurse told me he asked for it when wife asked to have the oatmeal heated up. I made sure to tell the nurse she fed him the old oatmeal absolutely on purpose so he wouldn't eat the food I made. I would, at this point, I would physically beat her up. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. I would physically beat the shit out of this lady because yeah. I'm an imperfect human being with anger issues. Nurse is aware he's been asking for rice and beans. I didn't tell her initially what it was I just said. I dropped off dinner for him last night and it's in the fridge. She asked me if it was rice. Pretty sure feeding an elderly man hours of old food that was sitting in a window just, just to be recovered spiteful. from digestive yeah, cancer. Yeah, just from digestive fucking cancer. Pretty sure feeding an elderly man hours of old food that was sitting in a window just to be spiteful is proof of who the asshole is. Yeah. Am I the asshole? No, and I'm. Tell me where she lives. <laughs> <laughs> My best friend, now boyfriend, chose me over his ex-girlfriend and i can see that he is regretting it my boyfriend was with his ex for about four years they had a pretty nice and stable relationship my boyfriend asked me for advice on choosing an engagement ring i was always in love with him but i never told him before after accompanying him to see several rings i broke down and told him that i love him and that it hurts me to have to do this type of thing knowing that he was with his ex-girlfriend he started acting distant towards me and then i found out that he broke up with his ex-girlfriend and a few weeks later he started dating me i was happy but after a few months he started to look quite unhappy and down i've also seen that he checks his ex-girlfriend's social media frequently a few nights ago i found him crying in our room and found out it's because his ex-girlfriend is dating someone else how do i fix this it hurts me so much to see him like this and i didn't understand that he chose me just because of our friendship 